Okay, so I'm back with another video on the axis of astrology and the sixth spoke of the wheel, which allows your astrology practice to move and take you somewhere. Um, and it's on research and case studies. So after we organize all of the important frameworks and get all the calculations right and we connect things in the right order, priority and sequence of when things happen, then we need to start doing some research and seeing how these things work. Um, and, you know, looking at more charts than just our own, you see I have some things here behind me, like an overview of the concept, more than just charts of you and your family. You, you know, you want to look at world events, other things like this um, that I'm going to talk about, you know, the concepts of research and case studies is so important. Um, what most people get stuck on again is this kind of insular approach with astrology where it's all about you and your chart and again you want to understand when we approach it that way when we approach anything that way then we're just reinforcing our sense of separateness we're just reinforcing that this is me and all the stuff that happens is me and astrology is one way for me to get what I want and figure it out and conquer the universe and never you know suffer and all of these things what happens is when you study it you start to push yourself up toward it think of that metaphor it's very important and so rather than astrology being one more thing that you pull t toward you that revolves around you and reinforces your separateness and you this little you know creature it's where you this little creature starts to get extended toward something higher and you start to learn about the higher qualities of your consciousness and that that's who you really are and this is why as I've said the whole time the study of astrology is the study of extending your limited nature and connecting it with the cosmic nature the whole reason you suffer in life is because you think you're this little separate person you can boil all suffering down to that simple idea that's a huge idea and astrology shows how shows the specifics of all of those qualities of suffering. Like I said in the very beginning, the very first video, your suffering with the sun is thinking that this is all the power you have. With the moon is thinking this is all the connection you have. With Mars, this is all the courage you have. With Mercury, this is all the intelligence you have. And as long as you think that, that then you're going to suffer around those things. And again, people, when I encounter people through astrology, they're using astrology to reinforce this separateness and this suffering. By not studying it and just trying to pull it towards you, it's doing that. It's reinforcing your limitation. When you start to study it, you start to extend all of that. So you, in fact, this is what we learn in the course, the first part of the course. The reason it's such a transformative life experience for people going through the course is because the first part, that's what I'm talking about. That's what you're learning. You are learning who you really are. I don't just say that as some learn your place in the cosmos, learn who you really are. I don't just say it as some kind of buzzwords. I'm saying that that's what you learn. The first module is what the evolutionary process of the sun is, which is the evolutionary process of your power. Evolutionary process of the moon is the evolutionary process of your heart. Connecting with the depth of your heart of Mercury as the evolutionary process of your intellect and your mind and what it really is. It's not just all these details of this world, it's pure discrimination. Evolutionary process of Venus is pure joy beyond personal desire. All of it, we taught, it's constantly pushing and evolving your nature toward the highest nature. Okay, so again, this is what awaits you if you want to learn it. And again, then you're so enthusiastic to want to share that with people. It's like, why doesn't everybody know this? So then you get inspired to want to share that and extend. And again, in another way, you just get more generous and you want to share that with people and it's, and it's inspiring to you. So the next step in the rung, you know, the next rung in the ladder or the next spoke in the wheel to actually start bringing that to people in a bigger way is you need to start again looking at charts other than your own and you need to start doing some research and case studies um, and so this is 
the next evolution in the process. And in the course, you know, we have a lot of case studies where we start looking at different charts, especially when we start looking at yogas. Again, instead of just looking at your chart, you want to look at yogas of like, you can look at yogas of famous people and the dashas and the timing of famous people and other things like that. I'm going to be looking at some of that in this video and some research. So again, um, you want to look this over and register because we're at that that very delicate point in the year when people register. <laughs> so if it's still available, you want to do it and look over the offer very well. It's extremely affordable. It's extremely convenient. Um, you don't have to leave your home. You can just dedicate a couple hours a week. You get unlimited access to me and my entire staff. Um, you don't have to show up for some appointment. You don't have to worry, what if I have to travel? What if I have to do that? Do it. We all do it. It's there for you. You can access it anywhere, even if you've got to leave it for a couple weeks and then you come back and get caught up. It's a very easy way to learn this transformative life energy that, that all Brahmins are supposed to know. All of us educated people are supposed to know how the universe works and how life works itself. So take advantage of that and see how your life will change once you start connecting with the higher rather than pulling the higher down and trying to fit this infinite energy into this limited life. You're much more than this limited life. So a few things that I have here that are important that you want to start focusing on right now to start changing your relationship with astrology beyond just the sort of snacking information gathering habits. You want to start looking at the daily astrology. Now I've actually designed a whole website, a whole like member site around this where I do daily forecasts all the time and stay up to date with the sun and the moon cycles. I have a lot of information. You've probably seen it. Check that out because seeing and just feeling that all the time is one of the best ways to learn. And again, we tend to focus on our chart so much. Well, how does it relate to me in my chart? Of course, all the cycles relate to you, but even when they don't, you can see the collective consciousness around you based on just knowing the daily astrology. And, you know, when I say daily, noticing the trends over different amounts of time. Saturn moves into a sign for two and a half years. Jupiter's in a sign for a year. Notice that year, what's been the themes of the world? Again, I talk about these things all the time. And, of course, that's going to fall somewhere in your chart and all of that. But noticing the daily astrology, again, starts to be research. Noticing where the moon is going all the time. Research this. Notice how those things line up, if you want to personalize it directly, with yourself. Know your chart and notice when the moon goes into your first house. And when, you know, every month the moon's going to go through your first house. It's going to go over all your planets. Notice what happens then. So... Staying connected with daily astrology is one of the most organic ways to actually um, learn astrology because this connects you with the dynamic factors. Remember in the last video I talked about static and dynamic factors? Static factors are basically where the planets were when you were born. You don't change it. How the doshas were set up. That timing is going to run. You don't change it. But then that interacts with the dynamic factors, which is where the planets are moving all the time. That's the big dynamic factor, and it's always in play. And so when you do this, you get deeper objectivity, like I already mentioned. Most students are not objective. They're looking at everything through their own chart, obsessing over their own chart, not coming at it from the right direction. Again, when you're looking at your own chart, if you don't know how to read it, if you don't know where to start, and you don't have things in the right priority and sequence, you're not objective anyway. I mean, you're not objective anyway unless you know how to read it, but it's then pulling things from the wrong place and assigning the wrong importance. Like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm depressed because I have, you know, Jupiter in my eighth house. Or, you know, you know, my mother's this way because I have Mercury with K2. Or, you know, it's just like assigning the wrong conclusions to things and just not evaluating things correctly, not understanding the evolutionary principle, not looking at the subtlety. Very easy. So when you do more research, you get a lot more objectivity. Again, looking at world events, very important. World events and systems and structures are very um, good research tools because they're events. 
And ancient astrology was re basically revolved around events. And that's in Western and Vedic astrology. As I said at the beginning, the, the first uses of astrology were to pick the right times to do things and also the wrong times to not do things or whatever. And we, you can see this by researching events. There's no shortage of things to look at. There's no shortage of charts to draw up. Things are always happening. Make a chart and look and see what made it happen. Again, if you do it now, you're not going to know how to interpret it because you're not connected to the power. I say this to my students. I'm saying after you've done all of this, then this research makes a lot of sense. And I'm always pushing my students to research a lot of what happens in the course is once we start getting to that point in the course, there's research charts. We do a lot of research, not just on our individual charts, but on events. Again, people also follow my videos, so they see me talking about this event. Then it makes a lot more sense to them. So, great way to learn astrology and to evolve your understanding beyond just your limited world and your little snacking. Um, and again, must look at more than just your chart and your family's chart. It's just, it's, it's like trying to learn to be a doctor by just studying your own body. Right? You could never do it. You need to look at it scientifically and objectively. And um, that's really the only way to evolve that. So, very important spoke in the wheel is after you've gone through and you've gathered all the information and you understand the principles and how it filters down into the practice and the things you need to understand, you know, that you need to memorize. And again, I preface this with once you understand the principles, then you apply the principles to planets, signs, houses, nakshatras, and all that. You understand those principles. Then you look at the calculations, like the aspects, the yogas, combustion, retrograde, the astronomical factors. Then you prioritize and put those things in the right sequence and, and you know how it's supposed to work, what makes this that way, what makes things that way, like in the last video. You understand the difference between what makes for an event and what makes for an understanding, the difference between what and why. You understand how to interpret or to generally try to interpret this kind of combination of good and bad things like a Viparit Raja Yoga or Nietzsche Bhanga Yoga or good thing, bad thing, good thing, bad thing and you can separate all those things out then to really see them in action you need to research. You need to research and start saying oh yeah I see that happening here. Yes this happened like that. This event happened showing that and then you start to see okay you start seeing it working on a higher level with more objectivity. The problem with always looking at your chart or other things is you don't have any objectivity. You're, you're afraid of this, you're spinning that, you know, I, uh, perfect example, you have too many biases with people you already know, right? You know, like I can read the chart of somebody that I already know. It doesn't, I'm not biased anymore because I'm, look, I'm reading the chart. I'm not, I don't, even if I already know them. And, but some people say, well, are you saying that because you know me or because you're reading the chart? I can do it because I know what I'm looking at. Just like a doctor can examine somebody they already know. They're biased just because they know them and they know that the person, you know, smokes or drinks a lot of coffee or whatever. That, that is not going to bias them being able to diagnose and, you know, read the data. But you can. <laughs> if, right? I mean, I don't know, maybe you can, but I mean, unless you're at a high level, your bias is going to interfere with everything. You're not going to make a good judgment. So, you know, it's like when I do a reading for someone and they understand astrology a little bit and they'll tell me about their ex-boyfriend's chart or their ex-husband's chart and they project all this stuff onto it. Oh, is that why they're, you know, pathological narcissistic disorder and they put, bring all this? It's like, you're not objective here. That's, you know, it's just a kind of thing. So... Again, really getting objective allows you to unravel all of that projection and polarizing and, and frankly, like unfairness. You know, there was a reason why in the early videos it said that one who blames this Vedic science will go to the hell called Ralrava and will be reborn blind. You know, I didn't make a big issue out of that, that, that shloka, but people with a little bit of knowledge of astrology can do a lot of damage. 
damage to yourself, damage to others. And I see it all the time, by the way. I see it all the time. And you need to be careful. You need to be careful forming conclusions about your own chart that you're not qualified to make, making conclusions about other people's charts, and this thing called confirmation bias, which means you confirm what you're looking for. You confirm your own worst excesses. You'll find it in the chart. You know, and I tell my students, be careful of this. They'll say, oh, is that why this person is this pathological, narcissistic? And I'm like, wait a second, you're, this isn't astrology anymore. You're just, you need to just read the chart, right? So again, research gives, it starts to unwind a lot of things on a lot of levels, which is, first of all, that tendency to go to places that you go because of your sense of, you know, you know, because of your attractions and aversions and your, and your issues. When you start to study something objectively, you just become objective on many different levels. And I'll speak for myself, right? Less hooked into all the drama of the world. Again, studying astrology and seeing it work makes everything higher. You become much more tolerant, you become much more compassionate for everybody, for, including yourself. Because you realize, you start to see, oh, okay, we're all just, everything is a gradient of one thing or another. You get out of all the polarized thinking. Most astrology students, most people, not just astrology students, but we all have these, we're so polarized around our opinions and the problems that other people have. We want to fixate, and, and especially now with all of these psychotic disorders and names we give things, and, you know, narcissistic, sociopathic, all this stuff would turn things into these harsh judgments and everybody's got the tendency for all of these things just to diffuse all of that drama around things and just see things objectively, compassionately, without all of that charge is a great thing. And again, when you start to study astrology correctly, you get out of that tendency in you to fixate and obsess and start to see things more objectively. Okay, well, I, I get that. Well, this person has some good qualities too. Okay. So you see things in a more nuanced fashion. So let's get into the mind map and a, and a couple um, case studies and some research that I've done. So you see there's a handout um, that you should download and there's a couple research studies that I have um, from a recent web class that I've done on Jupiter moving into Virgo. And before I taught the web class, I do some research. You know, this is one of the great things about teaching, is before you teach something, you go and really learn it. And I've always been talking about Jupiter and Virgo, and I talk about it here and there. But when you got to teach it, then you go back, and I started to look for people who had Jupiter in Virgo. And you see, I found some very interesting things. And based on that research, it gave me a different perspective of people who have Jupiter in Virgo. I found that Sylvester Stallone and George Bush, the last President Bush, were both born on the same day. They both have Jupiter in Virgo. They actually have Jupiter Moon in Virgo. Um, and certain interesting character traits, so now I realize that they were both born the same day, but with different ascendants. Um, and again, that gave me a different perspective on, the, on that placement. Um, they both have Jupiter Moon in Virgo, by the way. And then there was also another connection that I found between Marilyn Manson, the singer, and Eric Harris, who was also known as the Columbine Shooter. Um, and they also both had Jupiter in Virgo. Um, and they were sort of connected because Eric Harris, the Columbine Shooter, actually was inspired by the music of Marilyn Manson. And they were sort of linked in a way that I wouldn't have known and didn't realize until I looked at that and started doing the research. But the point is, you know, researching this and going and looking gave me a whole new perspective on the specifics of how Jupiter in Virgo would come out. An inspiration and an inspired purpose based on details, based on being sensible and rational, maybe even a little bit sort of cynical, and um, fearful because Scorpio, uh, because I'm sorry, Virgo is a Tomasic sign that's oriented towards protection, especially making sure that details, which is Mercury, are 
caught before they could be dangerous. This is what Virgo does. Oh, I better be careful. Better not let that detail get through. And Jupiter is about hope and inspiration and the sattvic guna. And so that inspiration and purpose gets a little bogged down in detail and worry. But the benefit is that we also become very rational, very sensible about what inspires us and things like that. So you can see it play out. Marilyn Manson, a lot of his music was, um, he actually made an um, album called Antichrist Superstar. I mean, Christ is definitely a Jupiter thing, but he was very much about Antichrist. He was very much about the symbology of Christ, I guess you would say, and religious kind of spiritual symbology, but it, coming at it from a very sort of dark and almost at times sort of twisted mentality and finding alternative ways to be inspired. He had Jupiter K2 in Virgo. You can see Jupiter K2 is often atheistic, which I also know, um, because I've researched that before as well. And of course, little did he know, his inspirations would inspire a mass murderer to go into high school and shoot a bunch of people. Again, so these are the kinds of insights that come when you research and you actually look at charts and find the connections. And of course, I know Jupiter K2 has a tendency toward um, atheism because K2 finds problems with things. And Jupiter is religion, what we believe. So K2 is going to go, I don't know, you got to convince me. Of course, Jupiter K2 Virgo, very much about all the details and the kind of hair-splitting details. So um, it's not surprising that Marilyn Manson would have that kind of um, you know, uh, tendency. And it doesn't mean he remains an atheist, it just means he's not going to believe the religion of his culture and he's going to be very focused on it. Because again, K2 creates like an obsession over something. And it's like an obsession with inspiration and really seeing through all of the religious hypocrisy. It's a huge Marilyn Manson theme in his music. So, one of the other things that I found when I started researching was Jupiter and Virgo corresponds with U.S. elections. So I went back and looked at the last five elections with Jupiter and Virgo and wanted to see who won the election. And going back to 1956, which was 60 years ago, that's five Jupiter cycles. Jupiter takes 12 years to go around. So, um, and notice some important trends. Usually the conservative Uh, candidate wins. Eisenhower was Republican Nick, and, and very conservative. Nixon was conservative and Republican. Uh, Ronald Reagan, conservative, 1980. These were all conservative, hardcore conservative sort of icons. George W. Bush, conservative. The only one who won that wasn't conservative was Bill Clinton in 1992. The other thing I realized is three out of those five were also change of party, where the party changed there was a Republican in office than a Democrat or vice versa. So again, researching this made me think, okay, I get this. Now with Virgo is conservative, politically, you would expect because it's an earth sign, it's very much about practical details again, and a kind of more fearful and perhaps even discerning quality. Um, and also a sort of change, like, okay, we've had enough of that, let's bring in this now. So. Again, this comes from research and looking at events and looking at things that aren't just people and psychology. Again, those things are so subject to interpretation. But when you start looking at a bunch of charts and then looking at the events, then it, it's, it's a different sort of way to gain objectivity over something. Then you can bring that into the sphere of a reading or whatnot as well. And so now I'll go off of the mind map and go over the different spokes that I have there for research and case studies because again it's very important the implications of what happens and you know how to research and what starts to unfold for you once you do. So first of all there's four main kind of spokes on that um, section of the mind map watching the daily astrology as I have up here. Very important part of research what happens is then it expands and deepens your connection to the cosmos. Like I said, it's not just then about you, your chart, pulling the attention toward you. It's about expanding towards something higher. Again, you just saw in the research that we talked about, under, you know, getting a different appreciation for Jupiter and Virgo. 
rather than, oh yeah, my boyfriend has that and that's why he's so, you know, you know, critical or whatever we would say. And again, this helps you really connect to your intuition because now it's expanding internally and you start to connect to your intuition um, with astrology rather than just your psychology and your feeling of separateness. Intuition is very important. And um, what happens is people tend to think, well, is this rational scientific or is it intuitive? You want to understand intuition is just your own personal relationship with the science. You want to understand that when they say astrology is part art and part science, the art part is the part that's different for everyone and the science part is the part that's the same for everyone. I teach the science part and then I try to teach you how to access the art part. Meaning the part of you that's artistic and the part of you that has intuition must link up with the part that's scientific. They're, they're always at play in everything you do. No matter what the science is, every individual brings the science to life through their intuition. Okay, So when you start to research, you start to connect with the higher qualities of the science and then that also connects to your intuition because you start to see the connections yourself. Here's the, and this is something I have to really get through to my students a lot. And, I know a lot of my students watch these videos, so I'll talk to you all directly too here, is that no matter how much you study with me and hear me say it and watch me do it, it's no, at some point you have to do it. You have to research. You have to take what I'm doing and start looking at a lot of charts and seeing it happen. Until you do that, it's not going to link up in your mind and in your consciousness, and you're not going to see the patterns. You have to see the patterns. You can't just watch me do it. This is why, like I've said many times, people learn from my videos and they think they're actually learning. And so I say, okay, now explain it to me. Since you learned it, explain it back. And they're like, I don't know what to say. Right, because you haven't done it yet. You have to do it. This is what this part of it is. The research case studies and the practice is you doing it, not just watching me do it. And yes, it's great that I can unfold the science for you and show you how this stuff works and show you how it goes together. But that very crucial link, step six and seven, research and case studies and practice and application is where you make the transition into actually doing it. And in the course, there's a huge part of this is I keep pushing people, do it, do it, do it. Research, start having conversations with people, start practicing it, start doing it. You don't have to be you know, working outside of yourself. You stay within your ability and start to talk to people and start to see these energies working yourself and you'll be able to do it because I'm training you correctly. <laughs> You're getting the science, but the science is going to stay dormant unless you practice it. The science is there, but the art is in you because you are art. You are a work of art. You're a unique work of art. It's only been created once. And so, to link up the science and the art, this is what intuition is. That's what your intuition is. Unlocking your intuition is what I try to do as a teacher. Not to make you a robot, of known, not to turn out Sam robots going out there, you know, repeating what I say, but make you, empower you to be, to connect that science with your intuition. So it's a huge shift that happens when you authentically start researching and seeing these things link up in your mind and consciousness. And the last spoke I've already said, look at charts that look at more than your chart or others that you're familiar with. Because again, at the first stage of learning, you have too much bias, right? And you're, you're not sure what you're looking at when you're looking at your friend's charts. Well, is that because I know them or because I'm doing astrology? You're not sure yet. Again, I am. I know how to separate it. So when you start doing research, you clarify that stuff for yourself. You get outside your comfort zone and you start seeing it work in other ways like I'm showing you. So the effects of watching the daily astrology is you notice your work life and changes each day. Notice what happens. You notice how it affects your work and changes based on where the moon is, based on what's happening every day. Notice the effects on others each day. As you start watching the daily astrology, again, you start to see how, you know what? 
it's actually, it, it, you know, I saw the moon went into Scorpio today and, you know, got everybody and me, I was irritable, I was on edge, I was feeling, you know, a little paranoid, but feeling very emotional. Wow, it's true. And everybody around me was. It's true. So you start to notice the personal changes each day through astrology. Not just each day, but then, you know, as the planets move, you can use your chart too. Like if, you know, you have a planet in, you know, in Pisces and, you know, and, you know, Jupiter goes into Virgo and is directly opposite your moon, you'll feel that because it'll be aspecting from the sky to your chart or whatever it is. So you'll start to notice your personal changes each day and through different weeks. Again, what the sky is doing, the dynamic factors, is they're always moving relative to your chart as well. And the trans or the static factors, which are the dashas and the cycles and your chart, those things that are fixed, are always interacting with the planets moving in the sky within the structure of the dashas and your chart. So again, like I said before, in a previous video, it's easy to think that, well, what if the dashas say this? And the transits say that. I'm confused. Well, it's not confusing. There is no contradiction. It's just one works inside the other. This is what you learn. This is what we study, is how to be able to read that. It's only confusing if you, if you're not, if you don't know the ratio of importance, like we talked about in the last video. Every, there's a ratio of importance of how transits work within dashas, how harmonic charts work within the natal chart, how karmas work within our evolving idea and consciousness. There's nothing in conflict. It's just when you don't understand the specific little ratios, then it seems confusing. And so, like I said, with Watch the Daily Astrology, you know, one of the other things is watch the news and notice the astrology. It's so obvious. It's so obvious when you're paying attention. So obvious. So that's, you know, and so the other part of the research and case studies is expanding and deepening your connection to the cosmos. Like I said before, it stops being about you, starts being about your evolution once you start doing research. And that connects you to other Vedic sciences as well. You start seeing the connections. Oh, this is about yoga. And again, the more you do yoga or Ayurveda, the more you start to just, it starts to be a, a life practice. And that's also a portal to other teachers and gurus um, and other, other great systems and teachings, not necessarily astrology, um, at least while you're studying with me. But we, you know, we do keep it simple, but other great gurus and masters. And then everything changes and elevates. Once you start to connect and you start to expand, everything changes. And you start to connect your limited mind to the cosmic mind, as you've heard me say many times. I don't just like the way that sounds, I'll do a, although I do like the way it sounds. It's actually what happens. It stops being about your limited mind, your limited, oh, I'm this person, I have these problems, I've analyzed everything to death, and astrology is one more way for me to analyze everything to death, because this is me with all these thoughts. God, is any wonder we're crazy, we're neurotic. It's like, wait a second, maybe that whole thing is the problem. Is there something bigger than that? We're always looking for it. Again, people are always looking for it. What's beyond this thing that I'm always kind of stuck in? You say, well, there's astrology. Study it. Oh, I don't have the money. Don't have this. Don't have time. Don't have this. Don't. Have... Okay, you don't have it. Then you don't have it. Those who <laughs> take it a chance and actually learn about themselves, this is what happens. And so, again, one of the other great things, you connect to your intuition. So important. And again, Frankly, not just astrological intuition, but you unlock the intuition of all the planets. You've got to understand this. This is who you really are. Your pure power, your pure inspiration, your pure intelligence, your pure devotion, your pure commitment and focus. If you think you're this limited version and you don't even know the other possibility, how can you unlock it? You don't even know the higher quality of Saturn. You don't even know the power of it. You don't even know the power of Mars. Literally, you don't know it. How can you unlock the power of it if you don't know it? I mean, think about it for a minute. <laughs> right? So you connect and unlock the power of your intuition when you study astrology and you really start to do and research. You start to see it in a higher level and feel it, and it unlocks in you. It evolves through you. And then you can pass that depth on to others. That's what you want to do. 
because you start to see. You see people stuck in their stuff. And this is what happens as your vibration elevates. And you know this. You know this in things that you've learned already. It's like when you've learned something and you've gone to school for it and you see other people toiling away in it. You go, no, wait a minute. Here's how that works. Well, you know, we do it with children all the time. Or, you know, you've learned how to cook a certain meal and you see someone who doesn't know how to do it. When you start to study astrology, you start to unfold your consciousness and you see people stuck in their consciousness. And you know how to help them. You literally know because you're connected. It's connected in you at that point. And this helps you deepen your meditations, deepen your connection to the heart and the truth. And you go deeper than just your emotions. We live up and down on the emotions. We're so emotional. This, that, emotional attractions and avoidance, aversions, inner conflicts, all of our energy coming, cross purposes. You know, you love astrology so much, you'd love to be able to do it, but you don't believe you can. And you're inspired by it, but it's not sensible. You can't make a living at that. This, that, oh, but you can't. Uh, it's like, so what do I do? I'm stuck in what I'm doing or this or that, or, you know, we're just a bundle of confusion, bundle of inner conflict. So again, you know, one of my goals is to make it easy for you to study. You know, payment plans and other things, affordability, convenience, can't do any more. So again, when you start to, when you start to actually evolve your awareness around what's possible, even what astrology even is, it becomes a very different kind of value equation. And, you know, I talk about this um, quite a bit as well. You know, I shifted a few years ago when, when I was just driven. I mean, I grew up extremely poor. I didn't have any money, didn't have, and then I was a musician and starving artist and all this stuff. And about six years ago, I really just changed my relationship with money. I mean, I'm by no means rich or anything by now, but I started getting trained, literally, in how to... And, and took on an abundance mindset, that's the point, an abundance mindset where I started to expect success and expect and was willing to spend a little bit of money realizing that it was an investment, that if it paid off at all, it would be worth it. Particularly, and the real measure of something that has value is you get like 30 day money back offer so people give you the option to really look at it and make sure it's okay for you. And so I started doing that with um, you know, with like business training and stuff. So it really allowed me to get my message out more, which is what I'm doing now. But it took, a, it was risky because, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of money, but I was like, you know what, this is going to help me get my message out and I want to take a chance. And I did. And it's been the, the best money I've ever spent in my life, without a doubt, is the money to get educated. Because once you learn something, you have it forever. You know, you can spend $1,000 on a trip or this or that, and it's fun, but then you never get it back. You know, it was fun, it was a memory, and then you go back to your life. And it's fun, but again, the money you spend on education, especially if it's good, especially if it's something like a life education, is money you never regret spending. So keep that in mind, by the way. So, you know, again, going deeper than your emotions, deep in your meditation, and, you know, when you look at more than just your chart or others, it, you know, again, it universalizes your identity. You're more than just this separate being and have these people around you and your whole life revolves around that. <laughs> it doesn't. And the reason we suffer is we act like it does. Our, your whole life doesn't revolve around your family and your friends. And, you know, of course we love them, but you're a universal being. And so, again, your approach to astrology is this kind of grabby thing Elevate it once you start researching, doing more case studies, looking at things in a more universalized way. And again, watching the daily astrology, see you and your family with more objectivity. This is another great thing about looking at more than just you and your chart. You start seeing these people around you more objectively. I mean, isn't that a good thing? Do you really think that like obsessing over and worrying about the kids or your partner and all this we don't even see them clearly anymore. We see them through the prism of our own needs, our own neediness. It's not good because <laughs> it's not true. It's not real. They're also universal beings. They're divine beings. So again, research, case studies, evolving yourself, your consciousness towards something higher, 
really eventually starts to do all of this stuff. We get much, we get so much compassion and appreciation for people as divine beings as well. And you get to test all those astrological theories as well when you're looking at charts other than the ones you're familiar with or your own. You get to test all the theories that you would have and see it working in ways that you wouldn't. Like, for instance, if you have, you know, a family member who has, you know, let's say, you know, a difficult planet, like, oh, they got debilitated moon with Mars, you know, you know, you can get some professional software and do a research on that, you know, and search charts that have Rahu, moon, Rahu Mars in Scorpio, or whatever I just said, Rahu Moon or whatever, and look, oh, wow, this person had it, wow, and you start bringing up charts of, like, famous people, and you see how it plays out there, right? It's very easy to say, okay, to Jupiter makes someone atheistic and judge it as bad. Then you bring up a chart like Marilyn Manson. Well, this guy's been incredibly famous, right? You know, you might think, oh, yeah, my boyfriend has Moon, Jupiter, and Virgo. They're so blah, blah, blah. Then you pull up a chart of Sylvester Stallone. Okay, well, he has it. Mm, okay, well, maybe, maybe all my judgments aren't <laughs> so legitimate. Maybe I need to... Maybe I can see the same kind of tendencies here. So you get to test these theories, you get to test these things, and it really just evolves your awareness. So again, very important research and case studies, and then in the, in the, um, in the next video we'll talk about practice and application, um, and really taking that research and that, and that wider tent and start applying it into readings. Um, so. Again, you know, if you can still, if you're still able, you want to register for the course if that's, you know, what you want to do. I make it easy for you to check it out and try it, um, see how it works for you. Um, but, you know, either way, I hope you're appreciating these videos and enjoying the, you know, the kind of unfolding of, a, of the proven system um, that has helped hundreds of astrologers, close to 200 graduates, even in the last, like, four years. And um, so, anyway, thanks for watching.